The Senate has approved a $22 billion external loan requested by President Mohamed Buhari following an executive session that lasted for over 40 minutes. The approval was sequel to the consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt. The chairman of the committee, Clifford Odia, read the report and recommended that the Senate approve the request. Prior to the approval, there were arguments between lawmakers and the Senate president that lasted for over a half an hour. And still in the studio with public affairs analyst, Bolan Oloje there. Thank you for staying with us, Bolan. Now, first, the Senate gets to spend $37 billion now on the renovation of the House of Assembly. Then our president gets the, the green light to obtain a loan of almost the equivalent of our entire budget from the Senate. Why our leaders, why are they seeming to be like an inflated sense of, um, of the nation's capacity to absorb this commitment? Uh, well, um, I, I don't know why we are linking those two figures okay. anyway. Uh, the 37 billion is a budget. Uh, and it depends on whether there will be money to even fund it in the first instance. But I also get to you, okay. why should that come up in the first instance? Yes. Why do we have to talk about 37 billion? I think there is an element of insensitivity and a disconnect from the realities of our finances as a country on their part. If they are in touch with the realities, they will forget. For example, know that they, as public officers, number one, are overpaid. Then they won't also start talking about 37 billion for repairs. We'll see other auditorium across the world. Mm. And at this time in the, in, the, in, the, in the life of the country, those are not expenses that should come on the table in that quantum. 37 okay. billion, what yes. are you doing with it? You know, then it, now come the 22.7 billion, billion dollars loan. Do we need to borrow? Yes, maybe. Uh, our revenue is so poor. Um, we have a huge GDP. So by virtue of the GDP, you can say, oh, we have a capacity to borrow. That's fine. But it's not just about GDP, because debt is not repaid from GDP. Exactly. Debt is repaid from revenue. If I were doing this, if I were to, to be in that house, number one, who gets in a hurry to approve 22.7 billion? If this was your business, Will you close your eyes and approve that kind of a money? Nobody does that. What will it cost if we wait for one week to have a robust discussion, item for item, of that particular proposal? Yes. What will it cost us? Absolutely nothing. So what was the hurry about? So somebody just picked the uh, proposal, read it on the floor, and then the next half I read it on the floor is to pass it. It doesn't make sense. Now, interestingly, that the Senate is actually there and meant to checkmate or check the excesses of the executive and vice versa. Yeah. But, but we see these both arms of government, somehow they, they seem to be in the Brahmins where they, 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 they sponsor both of their extravagant ventures. Is this, is this a troubling trend? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. It is worrisome. The way they have handled that loan issue, I found it very worrisome. You, you, you have a you have a situation in which such humongous things have been proposed, and it has gone through a committee, and the committee submitted a report. So why do we lack the guts to discuss that report? Why? What's, what's the reason? He doesn't show a National Assembly that is ready and willing to add value. I'm not saying don't borrow. But for crying out loud, in the course of discussing those issues, having a discussion around them, we will have clarification, we will have questions, we will have answers to those questions. We might end up modifying some things or not. But when we don't even bother to discuss it at all, and we just felt it should be passed like that, it is definitely not the intention of the law, the, 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 the creation of a national assembly. We should be able to act as check and balances one against the other. All right, we do have a, a video clip of um, what seemed to be like a contemplation in the upper chamber. Let's take a look. You are putting us in a very impossible situation because you are telling us to pass even those things that we approve of. It's either we say no or we say yes. And we say that that is not the, the, the way that we do our debates here. We must look at each item and decide whether each item will go or not go. This is also about Nigeria. It has nothing to do with partisanship. Actually, if you want to talk about partisanship, 
Some of our colleagues here have also complained that this is lopsided in, in one section of this country. And we didn't want to take, make an issue of it. And we didn't. So, Mr. President, I want to ask on behalf of all our colleagues here that we take this issue item by item because we cannot just wholesalely pass everything that comes. If we have to do that, then we don't need to sit here and debate anything. There is nothing wrong in voting against whatever you don't want. Nobody is saying you shouldn't do that. And if you have an explanation that will guide us, we have taken so much explanations from our colleagues that will guide us to, to, to process this, uh, this report. So we, we don't have to degenerate it into partisanship. I think we have come a long way. Now, how do you react to all of this contemplation on the floor? It's, it's, it's clear. The same thing I was saying. Yeah. Incidentally, I have not seen this video. There's nothing wrong in taking those items, one after the other, and having a robust discussion around it. For example, I, as a citizen, I'm interested not just in the, in the loan plan. I'm interested in the repayment plan as well. Well, it's very critical. Which is and very you critical. did say something earlier when you were speaking that um, loans are not are paid by um, GDP. By GDP, by yeah. revenue, generated revenue. It's so by revenue. what is the plan to service and pay these loans? From what means, actually? You will need to go read the, the committee deliberations now. We don't have it. We don't know it. There was no a deliberation about the repayment on the floor, on, on that floor. So we don't know. Nigerians don't know the, 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 the repayment plan for this particular loan. They, they did say that the loan in itself is it's nothing to, to be afraid of. But, but I'm, I'm just wondering, have we met the criteria See, for, for further indebting ourselves as a people? That discussion, if we have had a discussion, yes. it will have been able to give us the comfort that, okay, after this robust discussion around this loan, we can see now that there is no danger ahead. That's what will have happened. And, and recently, but we never had that discussion. Yes. <clears throat> and, and recently, we did, we did read that our GDP has, has seen an increase of 2.27%, and we were tempted to take this with, with a pinch of salt. Now, how to this apparently good news about the health of our economy balance out the news of this hefty loans? In the first instance, while it is good that we are growing, and we grew at the you know, fastest rate we've ever grew in the last quarter of yes. 2019. But then, that, is, that fast rate is still 2.55 for that quarter, I think about 2.27 for the year. What is 2.55 if your population is growing at 2.7? We still have a long way to go. So while we celebrate little wins, we know that we have a long way to go. And we could be complicated. If you, if, if you take that, uh, uh, if you take our last budget, and you begin to look at how much of the revenue, actual revenue generated, goes into loan servicing, yes. then you begin to ask questions. Are we going to be able to pay these loans? No, it is possible that the executive have found a way, you know, to show how this loan can be repaid without problem. The question is, why can't we discuss that? Why? And just last before I let you go on this segment, now, is this the time to, to go, to be going fishing for huge loans, considering the fact that countries like China are actually reining in, in, on, in on their financial commitment because of the underdetermined um, under effects of coronavirus? And we're told that we need to reassess our budget in the light of oil prices drop due to coronavirus, the outbreak of coronavirus. Why are we you know, going fishing for these huge loans? You know, trading has started in Asia. Yes, I mean, they, their money comes well before ours. An oil price tasted $31 in early trading. So you can imagine what we're talking about. We're not, I mean, by the time, it might still close at $50. We're not saying that is the end of it. But it, it, it is, it's, it's a signal to us that, look, for us as a country, we must take due care about these loan matters. And if we must take loan, there's no doubt that we have serious infrastructure problems. And we cannot have any significant development without fixing our infrastructure. What we will essentially be doing is just managing poverty if we don't fix those infrastructure. And we don't want to manage poverty. So maybe what that will have done for us is to, when we look at those items, yeah. we will know which ones are critical and has to be prioritized, yeah. and which one can we step down. But we're not doing that. Public affairs analyst, Bella Ologeda, thank you one more time for your contributions. We're good.